Sherry, it looks like everyone that was in the waiting room has now joined. Excellent. Well, welcome everyone. We have quite a crowd today and I'm excited to be here with you tonight for the Short-Term Rentals Ordinance Amendments Community Workshop number one. I do wanna let you know before we get too far into this that there is Spanish translation available. And to access that, you will hit the globe at the bottom of your screen where it says interpretation. Folks who enter this interpretation space will also have the opportunity to participate in our interactive session later in Spanish. And I am going to now stop and let our excellent senior planner, Beatriz Ana Guerrero, say that in Spanish. Thanks, Sherry. Uh, para las personas que hablan español y necesitan traducción, en la parte de abajo de, la, de Zoom hay un botón que dice interpretación, eh, para, que tiene un globo terráqueo para dar eh, acceso al, al grupo de, de interpretación de clic en ese botón y puede acceder al, al, a la traducción. Tenemos a una persona que está haciendo traducción simultánea. Eh, les pedimos también que eh, se, se queden hasta el final de la, de la sesión, ya que vamos a tener un grupo que habla español que voy a estar eh, dirigiendo yo. Así que eh, estamos a sus órdenes. Si necesitan algo, por favor, escríbanlo en el chat y con mucho gusto les asesoramos. Recuerden el, el globo de la parte de abajo para que puedan ver la interpretación. Ready, Sherry. Great, excellent, thank you so much. Next slide, please, Amy. I do wanna say also that due to interest, the city will be holding an additional community meeting on December 12th. We were alerted to the fact that we missed one of our opportunities to um, let people know about this event. And that is definitely not something we wanna do. We wanna hear from absolutely everybody possible. So we will be hosting another event on December 12th, which will be noticed and sent out via the same way you heard this one and even more so the the opportunity that we missed will will not be missed again okay so next slide please and like all public meetings we have um certain rules that we we you know expect folks including ourselves to abide by and with a group of 109 people it looks like 110 um we just want to make sure that this meeting is uh safe and inclusive for everyone so speech or actions that disrupt a public meeting or may be perceived as aggressive, demeaning or harmful towards staff or other meeting participants will not be tolerated. There are staff who will be monitoring this meeting and ensuring that everyone is participating respectfully. If staff determines that a meeting participant is acting in a disruptive or disrupt disrespectful manner, they will first be muted and given a warning. And if they continue to persist in that behavior, they will be removed. If anything, crazy happens like a zoom bomb or anything like that, we may also immediately end the meeting. Um, hope that never happens. So if participants have any additional questions or concerns about this, they can reach out directly to me at smeads at srcity.org. That's a lot, Patrice. Or actually, Charles. Uh, your, your conversation is already being translated by Charles. So Okay, um, that's right. It's live. It's live. Yeah. That's so exciting. I, I forget how amazing technology is. So if we could go to the next slide, that'd be great. Just want to give folks an idea of what to expect tonight. Um, I'm going to do introductions first, and then we'll go into a very brief presentation. The breakout rooms will be an interactive um, session where we We'll have one staff member in each of the breakout rooms to act simply as a facilitator. There will be two questions, and we're really hoping to have dialogue about that. The staff member will record what they hear at the session and report back at the end of those sessions. So tonight on the call, I want to give a huge thanks to all of my colleagues who are here on a night off to facilitate the input of this work. Joining us on the call and participating in the meeting in, in breakout rooms or, or helping me move slides forward um, are Jessica Jones, the Director of Planning, Amy Lyle, Supervising Planner for Advanced Planning, Lou Kirk, our amazing Assistant Chief Building Official, Kevin King, Communications Coordinator, and a great bunch of planners, including Susie Murray, Monet Shikali, Connor McKay, Sheila Wolski, Nancy Waltering, and we are also fortunate to have the A-team working behind the scenes with Michelle Montoya and Kirsten de Pierre. On the call tonight, also 
Thanks very much is Assistant City Manager Dariel Dunstan and Claire Hartman, Director of Planning and Economic Development. Next slide, please. So this starts the, the presentation part, and, and most of the people on this call probably are very familiar with the regulatory history, but just in case, um, this all started back in August and September of 2021. We had heard from community members for several years that um, short-term rentals were, were bubbling up in terms of being a potential issue for the city. However, it was around this time that it became apparent that the city needed to really look at how to regulate short-term rentals because prior to um, summer of 2021, the only requirement was to register for transient occupancy tax and business improvement area assessments. So we went to the economic development subcommittee. They said, yes, we want you to full steam ahead, get an ordinance to the council as soon as you can. This is a potential safety issue because of fire um, and quality of life issue. So as quickly as possible, we turned around and did um, as much outreach as we could. For an urgency ordinance, I'm pretty proud of what we did. Um, we created a web page, a specific email. We did a public survey that was one of the highest um, responded to surveys the city has ever uh, conducted. We held an industry-specific workshop. After that, um, staff worked on drafting an ordinance, which was brought to city council as an urgency ordinance in October of 2021. That established the um, most of the uh, regulations, which I'll go over um, on the next slide. But after that, we noticed, oh, okay, so there's some things that are not working, that are still not working. And so we went back to the Economic Development Subcommittee and they said, yeah, I think you're right. Let's, let's come back with a couple of, of um, text amendments, one of which was to allow renewals. Um, so that because the permitting has taken longer than we thought, and it is a, 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 a large investment up front. We wanted to establish a renewal process that would um, end up being less expensive and, and hopefully uh, much more timely. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, these are just a, a highlight, high level look at the current regulations. Um, if everybody could just make sure they're muted. It's hard on large, large calls like this. Um, so thank you. Uh, we established a permit requirement, a um, bunch of definitions. Um, the one of the amendment, the amendment that I just talked about, established a maximum of non-hosted short terminals allowed citywide at 198, which was the number of permits at that time that had been issued or were in the queue. So it wasn't going to. Um, it was able. It, it allowed us to pause applications from coming in and assess where we want to go, if that's the right number for the city, if we should have more, that type of thing. Um, there's a 1,000 foot separation for non-hosted short-term rentals, except for in, in for those that were operating a long time ago that met certain requirements. Uh, we established the number of overnight guests that would be allowed based on the bedrooms, a daytime guest allowance, parking requirements, noise requirements, um, really trying to hit on those issues that were quality of life issues for neighbors, um, fire and life safety requirements, including when and where to burn, evacuation posting requirements, that type of thing. We prohibited events and required a neighbor notification for those people around you so that they would have a phone number to call if there were issues with the uh, actual operation of the short terminal itself. Next slide, please. The ordinance also uh, creates the enforcement process for the short-term rentals. The initial complaint should be directed to the 24-7 contact, which is provided on the courtesy notice to neighbors within 600 feet of an issued non-hosted short-term rental permit. And it, it has an enforcement penalties that step up in terms of severity based on the number of violations that are verified within one year. And Enforcement is one of the key issues of this ordinance. And so this is what we have now. We're looking at, you know, what can we do in terms of, of making this better and to serve the city, serve the city better. So that's one of the things that we are definitely reviewing. So if we could go to the next slide. And so now is the fun part. This is the part, this is the meat, this is the heart and soul of this meeting where we get to 
hear from you. Um, you guys hear from us a lot, and we really want to break out into these groups. These are the questions that are going to be answered. Um, and our Zoom hostess will place participants in breakout rooms. And each, like I mentioned, each breakout room will have one city, city staff member who's acting as a facilitator. The facilitator is present to ensure everyone has a chance to share their comments and to record what is heard. At the end of the breakout period, which is 40 minutes, the staff member will report back to the large group. So we'll get to hear what everybody else is talking about too, so that nobody feels left out. And this format is, is valuable when you have, at now we have 129 participants. If each of those, and say maybe 20 or staff, I don't think it's that many, but if each of those people, 120 people wanted to spend three minutes talking, that'd be 360 minutes. And I don't think any of us have, you know, six hours that we want to be here tonight. Um, We'll save that for the city council meeting. So we're going to break out into the sessions. We ask that folks have their cameras on. I see that a lot of folks do. I really appreciate that. It makes it real. It makes it more of a conversation rather than just seeing a name or just seeing a black screen. And that's what we're trying to do here is have real dialogue, real conversation, real collaboration. Um, I want to iterate, this is not a time for questions of staff. The staff members present here are not necessarily, you know, experts on short-term rentals at this point. Um, those questions should be directed to our email, which is shorttermrentals at srcity.org. And that will be repeated at the end of the, um, at the end of the session tonight on a slide. So you'll be able to write it down in case you didn't catch short-term rentals at srcity.org. Um, so that's where any additional feedback or any questions that arise should should come up. Um, this is a dis discussion among peers. And um, yeah, so I, I say we're ready to go for it. Um, Ms. Montoya, if you could break us out into groups, that would be fantastic. And we'll see you all back in about 40 minutes. Hi, Cher. Give me just one moment while I of get course. everybody yep. into their breakout room. Yeah. You'll be asked to join a group, if I'm not mistaken, that's how this works. And you just click on that and away you go into your group. And I hope to see some of you in mine. Sorry, folks, bear with me. A lot of people. There's a lot of people. And that's why I called you guys the A-team. There is no chance I would know how to do this. I could learn, but I do not know how to do it at this point. While we have a quiet minute, I just wanted to say thank you for doing this. I appreciate that very much. How do we talk? Maybe I'll go ahead and jump to the next steps. Um, if you're able to reshare your screen. So you, when you're in the breakout rooms, um, let's go ahead and skip to the next slide, if you would. Nope. Yeah. So when you're in your breakout room, you're going to unmute. There's a little microphone somewhere that you're going to click on. And if you can't find it, have your, um, your staff facilitator help you find it on your particular um, device. So we're gonna keep going with the community engagement. As I mentioned, we're already scheduling another outreach event. Um, we've been working at showing up at pop-up events so that we reach to you know, the greatest number of people in the community. So we look geographically, hey, where's our event we can jump onto? Or um, I plan on just showing up at certain supermarkets or soccer fields or whatever to get um, community engagement um, feedback from folks. and. This is just the projected timeline. We're hoping to have 
you know, some program updates for the Economic Development Subcommittee, which will have some new city council members potentially on it. That'll be January 2023. Head to Planning Commission for a public hearing with the draft ordinance and then um, follow up late spring with city council public hearing. But I do want to say that we are totally interested in meeting everybody. If you have a meeting you would like us to attend, you know, reach out. If if you have a small group, if just you want to talk with us, that's fine too. Um, and if you have other ideas of how to get more community input, we're also very interested in, in hearing that as well. So Michelle, do we have any luck on the breakout rooms yet? I can keep talking. I haven't I'm been sending in... everyone there now. Yay! Thank you so much. We'll see y'all back in a little bit. I'm not in any breakout room. It should be popping up now. Hi all, if you would like to go ahead and accept the prompts taking you into your breakout rooms, um, the discussion will continue in there. Thanks so much.
I uh, I don't have an invite for a breakout room. I don't have an invite for a breakout room. I'm sorry, what was that, Chris? Um, I don't have an invite for a breakout room. Okay, let me get you one. Give me just one second. Thank you. I think it's because I, I joined late. You should have one now, Chris.
Hi, all. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and put you into breakout rooms um, where the conversation is carrying on. Hi, all. If you could go ahead and accept the prompt taking you into your breakout room, um, the conversation is continuing in there. Thank you. Hi all, I'm gonna go ahead and move you into breakout rooms where the conversation is continuing. Hi there, please feel free to accept your prompts taking you to your breakout room. The conversation is continuing in there. Hi all, welcome back. Um, all of the rooms are closing now, so it'll be about one minute until everyone's back with us. Welcome back, everyone. All of the breakout rooms are closing down, so we'll be all back together and um, about 30 seconds or so. Hi all, welcome back. We're waiting for just the last um, few rooms to join us. Um, just as a quick reminder, if you could please make sure that you are muted, um, I would appreciate it. Thanks so much. Let me know when we're all back, please. We're at 128. Is there another group, Michelle, that nope, is lagging? I'm, nope, we're all back now. Okay, well, I don't know about any of y'all, but I think our group could have gone for another hour. So 
we thought we we were questioning is 40 minutes too long i don't know i don't know i mean people have a lot of great input great feedback and i look forward to hearing more um from what the other breakout groups discussed but i will also say please please keep in mind that anything that you want to say that you didn't have a chance to please write to short term rentals at srcity.org. And again, that's going to show up on the last slide. So you'll have a chance to see it as well as write it down um, so that we can we can keep going. Also in the survey that's out, if you haven't taken it, um, it's on the short term rentals website. Again, this link will be shown on the last slide, but you can find it at srcity.org forward slash str. And there is a an open chance to just thank you an open chance to just vomit the soul if you will i don't know if there's a character limit but i know we have a lot of stuff to go through a lot of stuff i'm going to be reading over the next couple of months so don't think this is your only opportunity um again you can reach out if you want a special meeting with your group yourself whatever so this was hopefully a good experience um and yeah michelle take it away in terms of having i guess group one report out yeah, I think we'll we'll go ahead and go in order. Um, if group one, if the facilitator, oh, actually, I think that maybe we don't know what the numbers are, so I'm just going to we were call one, on right? people. Kevin, I remember you catching first? group one, so I'm happy to go first for our group. Uh, uh, if that's okay with with everybody, um, yeah. So group one, you know, we had a, a pretty decent uh, sized group, about twelve people, uh, uh, about. More than half, I would say, were owners of not host non-hosted short-term rentals. So we got a, a pretty good amount of feedback from them in terms of, you know, uh, 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 what they think it is and is is not working uh, at the city in terms of the ordinance. Uh, you know, a lot of questions, a lot of a lot of items about accountability came up and and decorum between neighbors and ways to kind of rectify that. I'm not going to go too deep into the to the into everything that was said just because. There's a lot of people on this call, um, but one of the big major things was uh, uh, ways for one of the major poll ways was when does the city step in and, and kind of be a, a mediator to that uh, when when not, um, especially as it relates to, to hosted versus non. Um, we had a, a non term, uh, excuse me, a non a non hosted short term rental owner uh, talk to how he has. Uh, uh, cameras in his place so that he is able to kind of monitor those folks from a distance that are his guests uh, and keep an eye on them. So I thought that was kind of enlightening. Um, and then a lot of talk about the uh, bedroom uh, size uh, because it was mostly uh, short-term rental owners. Uh, some comments about how perhaps this city is too restrictive on the bedroom size allowed for its rental rooms. Um, and then uh, uh, I want to make sure I get everybody's comment here. Uh, uh, yeah, and then after that, it was mostly just decorum. It was like, how do we treat it? How do we find that center ground between making sure uh, uh, the the right players, the right types of owners, uh, uh, continue to host versus those bad players who are just frankly uh, uh, kind of not 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 a uh, not are not uh, carriers of proper neighborly decorum. So. That's it. I'll have full notes for you later, Sherry. Perfect. Thank you. I do want to just say that I, Michelle, check to make sure that I didn't just stop the main recording. We're good. Okay, excellent. Because I did hit the stop recording because of my group ending. And then I was like, uh oh, I hope I didn't blow the whole thing. So I do want to respond. I'm group two, so I'll end up reporting out next. But Kevin, I do want to let you know and everybody else that's on the call. When we first started this, um, this is a new program. It's been off. iterative from day one, hmm. um, we were requiring certain size bedrooms because we had to figure out how are we gonna count bedrooms, that type of thing. Well, we decided not doing that anymore. So what we do now is verify that the number of bedrooms applied for matches the number of bedrooms that are on the county assessor's record. And therefore, and also within our GIS system. And there have been cases where that's incorrect. And then our chief building official We'll go out and inspect those spaces and we can adjust the bedrooms accordingly. So if you were originally um, approved for say two bedrooms, but you had a third bedroom that was too small, um, then when you come up for renewal or sooner if you, if you need to, 
um, reach out and say, hey, you know, double check that I have three bedrooms and not two, and, and we can take it from there. It'd be much easier to wait till renewal, but um, I don't want anyone to feel um, like they can't operate at their full capacity. So are we ready for me to report as number two? Yes, please. Well, we had it. We had a great group. I'm just super happy with all the interaction and um, collaboration. And, and unfortunately, we, we really ran out of time. Um, we also had about 14 people because there were some people overlooking shoulders of others in the group that, that were also participating. Um, about half of them also um, owned or operated a short-term rental. A couple of them were hosted. Um, it, it was really nice to hear some of the positives that they stated about it, that most people are just really happy that we actually have started to try to regulate these things and keep track of where they are and, and are trying to show where they are so other people know where they are. Um, and one person I thought was adorable, she said, now I know where my competition is, which I thought was kind of cool too. Um, they were happy that in terms of asking people behaviors that would be considered a good neighbor anyways, like, hey, we don't want noise at our place anyways, but now we don't have to say it's our rule. We can say, listen, it's a law. It's the city of Santa Rosa's rule. And we're going to get fined a bunch of money for it if you mess up. And I'm going to charge you for that. So that's worked well for people. Um, then there was also a lot of what could we do better? Um, and the main theme I would I would call out here was that folks were really struggling between hosted and non-hosted and understanding how, um, because non-hosted tend to be where most of the complaints come from, why non -host, why hosted end up with the same um, regulations and the same permit cost. Um, but then hearing from also, uh, again, hearing from the neighbors, again, they were saying that it's mainly the non-hosted, but again, hearing that even with the regulations in place that it has not been enforced well, um, that they will, some of the um, people were saying that they reached out to our code enforcement team and we need to do better. I think we know that and we're working on that, um, but that type of thing and gave some good input for, um, you know, just that it, it affects quality of life. If you live in a cul-de-sac and now there's no parking, um, that type of thing, but hoping that most of the, you know, regulations that are in place, if we can start enforcing them and, and you know, make them a little better, we'll end up taking away some of the issues that that people were, were very right on um, discussing. Great. Thanks, Sherry. Um, for group three, we have Amy. Thanks, Michelle. Um, good evening, everyone. I had a great group as well, um, so we had a good mix of people, mostly uh, it was comprised of people who either own a short term rental or manage one, and we did have a couple people who were neighbors, and we actually had um, one neighbor and who um, and one operator right across the street from each other in the same room. Um, so <clears throat> here's a little synopsis of what I heard. I will say that we did have a couple people in the room who also had uh, a unique situation where they purchased a home hoping to do a short-term rental, and then the emergency ordinance went into place, which capped the number of rentals, so they weren't able to apply, one of which uh, her neighbor shifted from hosted to non-hosted, so even if the cap were to uh, allow her to apply, she wasn't going to be able to because of the separation criteria. Um, so a lot of really unique situations. Uh, so as far as what we've discussed, there were uh, a lot of the room that felt that um, there were some issues with code enforcement and that uh, really the standards of the ordinance are, are relevant if they're not enforced. And there needs to be a greater enforcement and also management. So um, everyone in the room really agreed that a lot of the issues stem from the management of the operations, but then also the code enforcement piece and making sure that there's a fair enforcement, that the violations are clear, that they're, uh, they're of value, that it isn't an anonymous complaint that wasn't, um, wasn't, isn't a, you know, someone from out of the area or not a direct uh, neighbor of the situation. 
And also uh, there was agreement that events should not be allowed. Um, others talked about the thousand foot separation. A um, couple people on the call felt that the separation could be reduced, maybe even down to 300 feet. And let's see. Also, um, there were some very personal feelings about how the establishment of the cap really violated rights of a homeowner and being able to accomplish um, having a short-term rental. And uh, some people on the call felt that it was an inherent right as a homeowner to be able to uh, allow for that short-term rental. And that because housing stock is such an issue, um, having the ability to come in and even rent for 30 days is valuable because a lot of people work here and are not able to relocate here um, because of the tight rental market and um, housing crisis in general. And then there were comments about the cap that 198 uh, was too small for the size of the city and that um, there, that should be reviewed. And then we had some conversations about the standards. Um, some who managed short-term rentals felt that the limit on overnight guests was appropriate, but the additional guests that are allowed during the daytime is a little bit too subjective and too restrictive that there needs to be flexibility afforded there. And that quiet hours <clears throat> are reasonable, that um, parking uh, is reasonable, it does need to be regulated, noise does need to be regulated. So um, I, I feel like some people on the call really felt the balance of needing standards in place, but the ability to operate. And, um, and also that uh, a renewal every year or every, every other year may be too cumbersome and that the life of a short-term rental is typically less than three years in general. So it may be uh, uh, something else to consider. So that pretty much summarizes um, everything that I wrote down from our room. Thanks for the opportunity. Great, hey, thank you. Okay, so we didn't have a group four. Um, so Sheila, group five. Great, thanks, Michelle. No, I had the best group. <laughs> yeah, we had a great group. Everyone was very um, considerate of one another, which was awesome. We raised hands and so it was manageable. Um, uh, most of the folks in the group either owned or managed or were considering uh, having an STR. There was one hosted STR operator, a neighbor of an STR that was unhosted or non-hosted. And um, someone who lives in Montecito Heights, where there have been some issues with non-hosted STRs and events. So I think I bulleted some things here. Um, someone brought up that a neighbor, uh, one person has a total of 10 STR permits. So is that something that the city maybe wants to look into? Um, for the enforcement um, and penalties, there was a concern that they don't want to see one bad apple essentially ruin it for the rest of, of operators who are behaving well and managing their properties well. Um, like the person in your group, Amy, uh, someone in my group also purchased a home with the intent to, one, not only live there, but also at some point do a non-hosted STR, and then the regulations went into effect. So they felt kind of blindsided by that. Um, also, the sentiment that 1,000 feet is too expansive, 198 is too small of a cap. Um, let's see, uh, a property manager mentioned the preemptive things that one can do, the outdoor cameras, the noise sensors, things like that, that having an STR can incentivize property owners to upgrade their properties, which is um, something that could bring uh, money into the economy. Um, a couple of people said they would like to see a committee come together of people, I don't want to say anti and pro STR, but kind of that sort of group so people could work out some issues together in a committee and maybe meet annually. Um, 
also had someone bring up the set fee to get a to get a permit. This was the hosted STR person. They mentioned they made about thirty eight hundred dollars per year on their hosted STR, and then had to pay something like twelve hundred dollars for the application fee. Um, so maybe try to figure out how that could be right sized. Uh, someone wanting to have STRs viewed as a land use. Um, that's something that's uh, transient in nature and that it's allowed in far too many zoning districts. Um, another gentleman I mentioned, he has a, an STR non-hosted. He lives close by it and how much care he takes to maintain it. And then the gentleman who lives next door to the uh, non-hosted STR mentioned that you can still make money by having your second or third home, whatever it may be, as a long-term rental, and that having these types of non-hosted STRs, not just the parties and the other kind of nuisance issues we think of, but it really disrupts, <clears throat> excuse me, disrupts neighborhood patterns, people bringing different dogs, people coming, going at different times of the day. You don't, you don't get that established neighborhood pattern that you do with a long-term neighbor. Um, also that the companies and people with these multiple permits are driving up the prices and a concern of where will this person's children be able to live. So thank you. And thanks to my group. Okay, great. Next we have um, group six, Connor. Thank you. Um, so um, we also had a great group. Um, Basically, in our group, there were a pretty good balance of hosted and non-hosted short-term rental operators, um, in addition to a neighbor of a short-term rental that has had some issues with nuisances in the past. Um, I want to also note that we had one hosted short-term rental operator that lives in an older home, which includes a guest house that has no identifiable permits and therefore had their short-term rental application denied, even though they had been operating a hosted short-term rental um, somewhat historically. So um, the summary of the positive remarks we received, um, basically the consensus for the group of um, short-term rental operators that it's a great opportunity for economic benefit, which has been discussed um, by the other groups. Um, and they also agree with the regulation related to events and overall noise that reduce the nuisance um, that is posed to the surrounding neighborhood. And in that same vein, um, having some city regulation, as um, Sherry's group mentioned, is beneficial as having something to kind of lean on as you're reminding your guests what it means to be a good guest and being in um, compatibility with your neighborhood and kind of identifying acceptable behaviors as a, as a guest. Um, so for moving on to some areas for improvement, um, I've heard a, I heard a pretty good consensus that the cost of the short-term rental fees are very high, and this in turn disincentivizes the operation of short-term rentals. And um, a couple comments were made that this disincentivization is kind of um, in lieu of proper mechanisms for behavior enforcement by the city. So they're kind of putting the onus on um, private landowners to enforce their own activities that are happening on their private property, whereas um, additional uh, enforcement of the existing regulations would be a better benefit as opposed to just trying to disincentivize via high fee cost. Um, there was a support for increased opportunity for a larger number of operators. I think that th the group of hosts of uh, short-term rental operators generally um, agreed that they their opportunity to host a short-term rental um, should be expanded to a wider uh, range of folks to kind of more align with the supply and demand because we've heard that um, from our group that not all of the short-term rentals are occupied every night. So if somebody, you know, it wants to operate a short-term rental, they should just have that right to do so. Um, we also heard of some opportunities for leveraging existing feedback loops in the Airbnb system itself, such as guest rating and host rating to kind of um, vet who is hosting and who is um, a guest at these various uh, short-term rental um, locations. 
Um, we heard that the regulation that we are seeing in the code as it stands um, today are it is perceived that it's the result of accommodating the more extreme nuisances in the city, whereas the majority of the hosts are strict about rules and do not uh, result in those nuisances. And these regulations that are trying to capture those more extreme cases are um, disproportionately affecting the more responsible hosts that try to do a good job about being good neighbors in their communities. Um, I also heard that there needs to be a bit of more clarification about the enforcement related to noise, like what constitutes a violation. Um, we had a couple of folks that have uh, cameras and actually decibel meters, and they're not exactly sure if they were to receive a complaint from a neighbor and they have all their noise decibel data, like what types of data would be at play when the city is verifying that complaint and then would therefore move it from a complaint to a violation because they're concerned that maybe if a neighbor doesn't like certain values or lifestyle choices of that hosted um, short-term rental or non-hosted short-term renter, um, they might fraudulently submit complaints or um, other complaints that are more based in personal attacks. And so we want, they want to see um, greater verification of those complaints. Um, and then finally, the general lack of responsiveness from um, the city as it relates to nuisances themselves um basically they would leave a voicemail for the 24 7 contact and they would not hear from them until the following day which doesn't really capture the um, issue if somebody's having a large event or um, otherwise there's an issue that's happening late at night and they can't sleep um, getting a voicemail or getting a call back in the next day doesn't really help them and then the city staff being available just monday through friday um, as it stands now is not helpful in mitigating those issues as they arise in a timely manner. So um, I tried to capture all the comments and I think that was um, kind of the, the meat and potatoes of them, so to speak. So um, I really appreciate everybody's um, frank conversation and, and your attendance tonight. Great, thanks, Connor. All right, um, group number seven, Jandon. Thank you, Ms. Michelle, and uh, good evening, everybody. So uh, I had a great group as well. Thank y'all for being so respectful and mindful of each other. And um, I had a we had a mixture of people. We had some people who hosted, some people who just want to listen in and get some information, some neighbors who had concerns and want to get more information, and people who actually own air, uh, short term rentals. And uh, also, we had a unique case. Um, one of our one of our group members. He kind of, he described it as a nomadic lifestyle. And so he, he's a new resident to Santa Rosa and he wanted to rent out his home, but um, according to the distance ordinance, he wasn't able to. So he was really disappointed by that. And so that was one of the downfalls. That was one of his, his cons of the ordinance. But a good thing about the ordinance is um, one of our group members, they really like the hotline. They think it, that's, that was a great idea. It helps cu uh, cut down the, uh, you know the violations of the ordinance and it's, it gives people uh, a safety valve um we also also had talks about like com having conversations with your neighbor is key like don't don't try to hide from your neighbor don't try to be sneaky with your neighbor like p just be respectful just you know just just talk just talk it out with your neighbor and all uh, one of our group members he also had uh he went he took extra measures for his hosted short-term non-hosted short-term rental he actually had cameras he had a decibel meter and he was like, I'll go an extra mile to actually follow the rules. And the people who don't follow rules, they're making it, they're making it worse for us. And um, we, they had a, that was a lot of concerns about the short-term rental fee being too expensive. I had a couple of people who said they were second guessing actually doing a short-term rental because there wasn't the their business plan wasn't penciling out. So they, that was a that was a big concern about that, especially for people who don't. Who don't run out like what if you just run out on the weekends or you just run out once a week so that was a big concern in our group and also um we had we had some concerns about the guest requirements it's, it's too restrictive and yeah that was about the gist of my my group they were kind of quiet but respectful great thank you all right for group eight we have jessica 
Great, thanks, Michelle. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Jessica Jones. Um, so we had a pretty good mix of people in our group of both um, uh, non-hosted uh, and uh, let's see. I think we had a, maybe a couple hosted um, rental uh, property owners um, and uh, then also neighbors of folks um, who live near um, uh, both hosted and non-hosted permits. Um, so good conversation. Um, there's a, a short list of, of what's working well. Um, mostly the, the hosted portion of the ordinance um, seems to be working well. Um, and uh, there were a, a couple of folks who thought that limiting the number of non-hosted uh, in the city uh, is also working well. Um, and then uh, there was appreciation for the city trying to work through the problems that we currently have um, with the ordinance. Um, for what's not working well or what, what we need to look at for fixing, um, there was uh, a lot of discussion about uh, the rules in the current ordinance and how they're perhaps not very clear. Um, There's a, a specific um, example of the ordinance being too subjective and not objective enough um, and creating a situation where it's um, challenging to understand what the rules even are. Um, and there was a couple of examples that were given. Um, and one of them was uh, uh, the requirement for events or the requirement that events not be allowed. Um, and specifically, what is an event? Um, the ordinance does not currently define that. And so, you know, it does that include a family having dinner um, on a front porch. You know, what, what does that event constitute? Um, and then also, you know, what does it mean to have a noise issue? Is, there was a lot of discussion about how um, people have different varying levels of um, concerns about noise and what is a noise issue for them. Um, and you know, I heard a couple of the report outs tonight talking about the potential for um, putting in a, a noise monitoring device, um, and that was brought up in my session as well. Um, that maybe that would be a good opportunity for a property owner to install something like that to help monitor um, noise at the property. Um, we also talked about the the cap that the city has put on non-hosted rentals. Um, um, just like I, I heard a little while ago, we also heard in our group that perhaps the cap is too small for a city of our size. Um, there were some folks in our group that um, would rather not see any non-hosted rentals at all. Um, but uh, we, the city should uh, relook at that non-hosted cap, um, but also consider um, that it could be having a cap at all could be a hardship um, on folks who are uh, trying to uh, earn money to live here in Sonoma County. Um, let's see, uh, there was uh, concerns about the fines for violations. Um, a couple of points on that. One, that fines should be greater for verified disturbances um, and actual real issues um, regarding disturbances and smaller fines for more minor violations like uh, um, not providing a TOT number on their, their ad in a, um, a local rental place. So uh, kind of relooking at how we do those, um, those fines. And then um, also uh, on the fines, um, concern about enforcement being an issue um, and you know whether people are actually getting citations that could ultimately lead to um, removal of their permit. Uh, let's see. Um, there was a suggestion of making it mandatory that owners pro that uh, property owners go through a professional management company for non-hosted um, with a local contact number and and a management company that has a proven track record. Uh, there was a couple comments about um, the local contact um, being called, and as it turns out, that local contact um, was not local, and in one instance, the local contact um, was answering the phone in Florida, um, so clearly not local. Um, 
discussion about um, issues with parties happening late into the night um, and not being able to get a hold of city staff um, and uh, not getting response soon enough from city staff when there are issues. Uh, let's see. Um, so uh, there was also a comment about rules for short-term rentals um, being different for the STRs than they are than uh, any rules that the city would have on a, a normal property owner. Um, and the city shouldn't be looking at discriminating against short-term renters. Um, there was concerns about the signs that have been put up in, uh, in uh, some of the uh, areas of Santa Rosa identifying homes, not hotels. Uh, and concern about whether those should be allowed um, because things like political signs uh, are not allowed to be provided uh, all year long. So the city needs to look into that. Um, let's see. I think that kind of summarizes the, the comments from our group. Okay, thank you. All right, next we have group nine and Lou. Hi, right, thank you, Michelle. Hello everyone, Lou Kirk. Um, I have to say um, that I had the most outstanding group and I, I will not brook any argument on that. Um, it was a really good mix. We had about half of the group that uh, had an STR or were involved in the industry, half of the group that didn't, uh, some vehemently opposed to them being in the city at all. And yet there was so much civility uh, just across across the board, I was very impressed. I was very humbled by these outstanding people uh, that choose to live in Santa Rosa. Um, so that being said, um, on the STR side, there was a general agreement uh, that the permitting process was easy, although there was some dis, uh, dis there was some disappointment in, in how long that took. Um, but as a component of the ordinance, uh, it, it came across as an easy process. Um, we discussed the fact that enforcement is too tough, and we enforced uh, and we discussed the uh, topic that enforcement was not tough enough. So again, getting getting it from both sides of the aisle, which is as it should be. Um, some of the more specific comments uh, included the two uh, person per bedroom rule really has a negative impact on on a person's ability to utilize their STR, and um, the observation was made that it shouldn't matter if 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 all else is being observed, if, if the quiet hours are being observed, if there's no disturbance, um, then, then why have that? Um, there was a comment that uh, should allow for home swapping, not necessarily uh, as an STR type in and of itself, but, but something that maybe was permitted before, but is now affected by this ordinance. And so some consideration uh, was asked for that. There was a, a lot of interest in people receiving copies of the success guide that went out in September. Apparently, a lot of the, a lot of people just didn't receive them. So I, uh, I I said that anybody that wants one will find a way to get it to them. Um, uh, again, I had one person that uh, felt that they should not be allowed at all. Um, but if we are going to allow them, uh, that there should be a solid fencing requirement, uh, and that there should be accurate directions to the uh, short-term rental so that we don't have people driving up the wrong driveways or down the wrong streets, that they know where they're going and are given good directions to get there. Uh, a comment was made that there should be public input for SVR approvals, much as we approve uh, CUPs, things like that. Uh, there was a general acknowledgement, I think, that bad actors can ruin it for everybody. And with that in mind, there was a suggestion made that there'd be an operator education uh, program where uh, ostensibly the city would um, work with these new permittees to make sure that they understood the rules and, and um, were sensitive towards their neighbor's needs. And uh, the last comment I made was that um, there, was a, there was a question about having a non-operation status. For example, if you, if you wanted to maintain your STR, but wanted to take a year off, that maybe you pay a reduced fee to keep it alive but you commit to not using it. Um, most noteworthy was that my computer crashed right in the middle of, of the uh, thing and I was gone. And uh, I ran to Michelle and told her to jump in for me. And by the time I got back on, 
one of the STR operators and one of the people that were really, really against STRs were talking and they were communicating and they were having an understanding. And I thought, well, I should have just stayed off the off the call the entire time. Um, but it was a good group and it was a good dialogue. And um, I'm very appreciative of everybody that's here tonight. Great, thank you. All right, for group 10, Monet. Okay, uh, okay. In my group, including maybe had 10 people, four or five of them are just attending to listen. So four or five others only spoke, including me. Uh, the comments about ordinance, our ordinance is that it is good that limits the number of occupancies per room. It controls events like not showing parties, uh, regulates parking and how many people can stay. And it also asks for the phone number of the short-term rental person. So neighbors can contact that person. So it's basically, it's good that we are respecting neighbors complaint and about what it can improve or change with our ordinance. Well, before that, there were like a comments about we need more data, like a data about the short-term rentals, how it benefits or impacts the city. We have a housing shortage. Does this uh, new short-term rentals have any impacts or our housing shortage? How about our TOT tax? So a data a background on the short-term rentals would be helpful. And then uh, also similar to some other mention about the fees. So the fee and annual renewal fee is a little bit high if it's good to reduce that fee and maybe just be a complete like an all time uh, short term rental, we don't ask for a renewal fee. And also our ordinance need to address like what will happen if the ownership changes? Does it get canceled or it can be transferred to someone else? What will happen to that 1000 feet distance? And some comments were about like, uh, maybe we should reduce the 1000 feet distance in areas like in downtown where we have more infrastructure, we have more restaurants, we have more public transportation versus areas like a Fountain Grove, it can stay 1000 feet distance, but in downtown, it can bring also more tourists. And there are people that are like a traveler nurses, they are coming and they can stay more in downtown area where those infrastructures are provided. And also one more thing, let me see, uh, more data needed, data and housing. Oh, and also another comment was like, it's not fair that one person can have multiple short-term rentals. There are some cities that one person has 12 or 15 short-term rentals. It should not be allowed in also city of Santa Rosa. And and also it's good to identify the type of person is like a, using the STR. Is it for like a traveler nurses or is it like a, for a family gathering? It's good to also have that information. So those were the comments from my group. Great, thank you. All right, group 11 with Susie. Okay, group 11 had, I think 13 people. Um, there were some that had other people over their shoulders, but um, I think there, we were a group of 13. Uh, it was a great mix. Um, people that hosted, people that hosted non, uh, they had hosted and non-hosted facilities. Um, and I want to thank everybody in my super group for being really polite to each other and really honest. I appreciate the feedback. Um, and yeah that you were honest about it. So I'm gonna start with the positive because that's always a good place to start. Although I will say that the opening positive comment, I thought it kind of was funny. And that is that the city is really good at collecting the TOT and BIA taxes. So I thought that one, uh, it just, it, it kicked, gave us a good kickoff. So the parking requirements um, that the city has and the, the no party, regulation, those are good points. Events that follow the noise and occupancy rules, these are really appreciated. Um, limiting the number of bedroom is good because it doesn't, in, it doesn't suggest a party house. Um, bringing revenue to our, our town and area, the restaurants, merchants, et cetera, is a super positive thing for our community. Um, I'm gonna say that, I'm gonna cut in here and say that I don't, it, there, there wasn't anybody that was absolutely opposed to uh, short-term rentals. 
with regulations. Um, there was an individual that had several people or several homes on one street that were being rented out and that was very problematic. So um, back to the positive. Um, uh, now that the current systems are in place, the regulation, the existing regula regulation is okay to work with. Um, it it uh, supports, um, yeah, again, uh, the, the having the regulations, people are, are, there were individuals that were happy to have the regulations because, because without them, you can't enforce them. So, um, it's, it's tough to put uh, all operations in one category, so, uh, or all operators in one category. I think we've heard that throughout, whether it's non-hosted versus hosted, or um, a lot of, um, a lot of non-hosted are smaller homes and they may not generate a lot of revenue and vice versa, larger homes, but there are larger homes that may just be rented out at certain times of the year. Um, we had an individual who, uh, he leaves the community during holiday seasons, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and rents his home out to families because it's a big home with a lot of parking, a lot of bedrooms, a nice big kitchen, and it's real conducive to uh, that type of family um, holiday celebration. So um, then I wanted to point out we got two good jobs. First one was it's a really good start, the urgency ordinance, and we can fix it. And the other one was good job at listening to the community. So I'm going to send that out to Sherry and your team. Kudos to you. Now we're going to go into some of the more negatives. Um, the the short-term rental community doesn't feel heard. Um, the lack of response from city staff to the permit applications and complaints. Um, there was concern about new rentals, come, more new rentals coming on um, when a home goes up for sale um, on, in an area that already has short-term rental units and has some bad actors in those, a for sale sign is terrifying. Um, lumping hosted and unhosted short-term rental businesses together isn't right. Generally speaking, hosted is not the problem. Um, <clears throat> why can't operators who have been in business for years with a track record of paying TOT tax continue to operate while the city figures out how to get how to process permits? Um, this individual acknowledged that he missed that original deadline, but that was kind of a surprise. So um, it doesn't. Um, I. I can't say that everybody, but I think that several people in the group didn't support the 1,000 feet separation. And there was a, um, a suggestion that if we do do the 1,000 feet separation or 1,000 foot separation, that it shouldn't be as the crow flies. It should be as the car drives. Um, uh, support, there, uh, support limiting the number of units one operator can own as an alternative to the 1,000 foot separation. Um, we got some suggestions as well. Um, Short-term rentals, um, if, if we were to limit the area, it was, or I, I guess I didn't, I didn't completely understand this. I'm gonna do my best to ad lib. Putting them in commercial areas where perhaps maybe the same, same rules may not apply um, in a residential area to be more restrictive, but in an area where you're surrounded by uh, commercial uses, restaurants, and what have you, that maybe um, the regulations are uh, a little bit more conducive to that environment. <clears throat> TOT collection, there was a suggestion from um, a, an operator as a gentleman who manages um, short-term rentals saying that we could um, to help us collect those taxes, uh, the websites like, you know, Airbnb and, and whatnot, um, a volunteer to collect those taxes and providing an online payment option would be really helpful. Um, and then limit it, limiting, I think I already said this, limiting the number of permits an operator can have. Yeah, I did say that in, in, as an alternative to limiting the distance between um, units. And I think that 
that pretty well summarizes it. We had a really good group and it was a mix of people. And um, I, I got to say, you know, considering some of the meetings I've watched, I was so happy to see everybody be polite. So thank you. Hey, thanks, Susie. All right. And group 12 with Nancy. And Nancy is our final group report out tonight. Great. Thank you. I'm Nancy Woltering and I will report out. We had really excellent comments. We had a good balance of neighbors and also hosted and non-hosted um, short-term rentals. And I'll start with some of the negative comments because then some of the positive comments helped address some of them. The major comment was disruption, loud parties, filthy language coming right over the fence, people that felt an unpredictability about the way they could use their properties because parties had become so disruptive, afraid to bring grandchildren over and just not knowing what to expect. And there was concern, particularly about non-hosted parties, as a number of people have mentioned on the call tonight, and, and specifically that are owned by corporations um, where there just seemed to be less accountability. And there was concern about non-hosted in general, and maybe they shouldn't even be allowed given the housing crisis. There was concern that they affect property values. There was concern that they should, there should be a disclosure in the escrow process. There, um, they feel that there needs to be better notice about them being going into the neighborhood. There was a concern about size, the feeling that up to about three bedrooms didn't seem to be a problem. More than that, there tended to be more problems. The enforcement process is not clear. After a complaint, it's often not clear whether the complaint led to a violation or not. So just more you know, clarification about how that works. We had the penalties are too high and the penalties are too low. And there seemed to be a general feeling that non-hosted um, houses should have higher penalties because they seem to be more of an issue. There was also a comment about the 24 seven response that the local person, it was hard to find somebody that could really be available 24 seven. And if there was truly an incident, it seemed that the police should be addressing it first and not a local person. So. Um, there's a concern about vandalism and, and that even when there are violations, some of the businesses continue to work. On the positive side, it was interesting. We had a couple of different people with non-hosted properties, one on a fairly large size, five acre site, and another on a tenth of an acre, both of whom had been able to run their um their homes for years without problems. And some of the issues seem to be they're well monitored. They also used the decibel, one of them used the decibel levels inside and out. They screened people carefully um, because of the larger lot, it didn't seem to affect neighbors. And there's a general comment that there's so much technology available right now that there really are ways to address it. And for the, the person that was, um, renting out a place on a 10th of an acre, been doing it for four years without problems. And they both had a kind of the consensus that this is their home. And so they really screened people and you know, want, wanted people that would take care of it. In general, there's a, a comment when, when people live there for hosted rentals, it doesn't seem to be much of a problem. Um, the penalty should be much higher for unposted, as I mentioned, and that's just about it. People were really respectful, had good ideas, and very open to sharing, and we had about 12 people in the group. And that's it, Michelle. Great. Thanks so much. And Sherry, do you want to wrap it up? Yeah, I just, it, if we could put up that last slide that has the, um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, I just want to thank everyone. I mean, I, I hope everyone feels the same as me. I kind of have the warm fuzzies about this meeting. I feel like we heard some good stuff. There's going to be more detailed notes. I certainly could have shared a lot more that was said in my group, but I have it on paper and we have the, the breakout sessions to watch again. I really hope that, you know, it turns into something that makes, makes most everybody happy. Um, I wanna thank everyone for taking the time to be here. I, I don't look at that lightly. It was a, a big chunk of time, a big commitment. 
and that's including my fellow colleagues. And um, yeah, I, I just really appreciate it. Everyone was so wonderful. And I don't know if anybody else that was on the on the group wants to say anything. I just I just say thank you and please reach out with anything you didn't feel that you had an opportunity to express and keep a lookout for me walking around with an iPad someday with uh, with the survey. Oh, that's the other thing. I do want to mention again that if you go to the short-term rentals website, which is short-term rentals, I'm sorry, srcity.org forward slash str, you can access the survey if you have not, and there will be an opportunity to provide some, um, some comments there as well. And if nobody else has anything to say, I say that's a wrap. Thanks everyone so very much. Appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Great job. Thanks. Thank Bye. You all. Thank you. Thank you very much.